Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Well, it's been a while since I've made a video, but uh, the Lord's been putting some things on my heart. I think I have some important things to share here. Um, I have a couple of dreams. I'm going to try to get through at least one today. I'm going to try to get through two. We will see. It might be, it's going to be two different videos though. All right. So this dream I had um, back in February and I've done a lot of thinking about it. Um, we've been doing home church and we even discussed this during home church one Sunday. And so I've gotten some input from other people about this and just kind of seeing what other people think. And I'm going to share with you uh, my interpretation of this, this dream. So in the book of Acts 2, uh, chapter 2, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable, notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So remember that part. If you have not made the decision about your eternal salvation and where you are putting your trust and you know who you are making the Lord of your life, you can only serve one master. So, I mean, the time is now to make that decision. Um, and I would urge you to just put your heart in front of the Lord and say, God, I give up. I, I give my life to you. It belongs to you. So, all right. I love the scripture because so many naysayers and mockers and scoffers want to say that dreams mean nothing and God doesn't operate in gifts and miracles and healings. And I think that's all hogwash. I'm not a cessationist. I've, I've looked into this and I just see what God is doing, not only in my life, but in the lives of many others. And God is absolutely continues to work miracles in his people to this very day. And it says, uh, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. So I just love that. All right, so we're going to jump right into the dream. So in this dream, I was shown a bunch of different scenes over a period of days, weeks, possibly even months. Um, it began in a very dreary, industrializing, uh, industrialized uh, looking camp full of people in lines. And the lines were for this selection process and people were being selected to be eliminated or not. Uh, I don't think that they knew that they were going to be eliminated. I think that in their minds, they, um, I don't know what they thought was going on. I did not see uh, social distancing or um, concern for pandemic procedures or anything like that. I saw people very packed in like sardines and these like big um, metal buildings. So uh, there were people everywhere. So, okay. I saw a man who I will call the professor, who was in charge of the selections of this one. Um, he was really the main one in charge of this. And he looked very weary, um, as if he really didn't want to be there. He was very heavy set with glasses. He was sweating heavily. Uh, he kept wiping his brow. So I walked up to the front of the line and I asked him, I said, you know, you need to stand up against this evil. Uh, because what's going on here is absolutely evil. And um, and I will also say that I don't think I was like me in this dream. I might have been operating from multiple different people's perspectives. I'm not real sure, but I, I did not feel like myself. It, I felt like I was seeing many perspectives, really. So, okay. Um, so I walked up. I told him that. Um, I'm questioning him. I'm, I'm trying to encourage him. So he looked at me with great regret and told me he had no choice or they would kill his family too. I said, he did have a choice. Well, he sobbed, took his glasses off momentarily, he like wiped the tears off his face and then he just went back to work. That was it. 
Um, then in another scene, I saw a very well-dressed woman with her two children on a railroad platform. She was like saying goodbye, like a final forever goodbye to her two children. And there were peep guards looking on from behind her. And she looked like she was going to head off to work after this. Like she had her makeup done all perfect, her hair. She had on dress shoes, a dress outfit for like work. Um, I just couldn't imagine how uh, she could be so composed with what she was doing. But she she kept telling, she told the older um she told the older child to tell the selection committee how beautiful Nicholas was. And like, tell them how beautiful Nicholas is. And that's like all she could say about her children. Like, tell them that you're beautiful. And I, I was just like dumbfounded at what I was seeing. And she just let her children leave that day forever with no fight. She didn't put up a fight at all. And then she went to work. So I saw other scenes of the camp emptying out. I saw the, the people perished, like they were just gone. I didn't see how they were eliminated. I didn't see that. I just know that uh, no one was left except a few of us who were planning an escape. Uh, so we did, we escaped through a swamp. We worried that the drones would find us, but they didn't. Um, and while we were in the swamp, we were getting stung by some kind of nasty goo underneath the like we were up to here in swamp water. It was so gross. And I just kept thinking if the drones come, we're going to have to like dive down. But I was like, please, Lord. <laughs> well, the drones didn't come. They didn't find us. Then we got to a village on the other side, me and like maybe seven other people or six other people, five possibly. Um, there weren't that many of us. Well, the village on the other side of the swamp was basically abandoned. There was no one left. Um, the houses were empty and we hid there in a house there, knowing that they would probably be coming to try to find us. Um, I was just shocked at how little people were left on the planet. I was really shocked. So, and everything was very dreary. It wasn't sunshine and rainbows. It was like gray clouds and just everything looked so drab. It was awful. So that's the basics of this dream. Um, and it reminds me of Proverbs 24. And this is really important to remember. I believe we're coming into some tough times. I'm going to say this. I am not telling you that this is what is going to happen in my dream. I am telling you that this has already happened in the world because when good men do nothing, then evil prevails. And it will happen again if we just stand by and do nothing. So if you falter, this is Proverbs 24, 10 through 12. If you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay everyone according to what they have done? So I just think about the, uh, the professor. It's like, oh, you know, it's not my fault. They'll kill my family. I'm just following orders. There's nothing I can do. I don't have a choice. Well, yes, he did have a choice. And everyone who makes the choice to do nothing has made the choice to just let evil prevail. So I would warn strongly against that because... I do not think that the Lord will accept that as an answer. So in Daniel 3, it talks about um, the story of Nebuchadnezzar and how he built this big statue. He wanted everyone to bow down to the statue. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, D Daniel's protégés, uh, they would not do it. They were not going to bow down before any other god except the god. And so they got thrown into the fiery furnace and King Nebuchadnezzar said, turn it up seven times hotter. Well, no matter how hot the furnace was, Shad, as you can see in this picture, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not burn. In fact, I think only the cords that were binding them burned. It's like they were set free. And then it says, he answered and said, lo, I see four men walking men loose see their cords were not holding them anymore 
loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So that's just such a cool story about how God truly will, um, you know, those who are, are just loyal to him, he will be loyal to them. So I would remind you of that. That's the other side of the coin. So the word Nicholas, this was the only name in the dream that I heard. Just tell them how beautiful Nicholas is. And when I, uh, I, th I thought about it for a few days and then one morning I'm waking up and, and I'm laying in bed and I'm like, Lord, you know, is there any, you know, more layers to the onion I need to peel back with this? Is there something about this dream that you want to show me? And uh, he's kind of put on my heart, look up the meaning of the name Nicholas. So I did. And depending on what source you look at, it either means victory of the people or victor over the people. So I'm thinking, well, gosh, you know, depending on whether the good people stand up or not, depends on which way that goes, right? So anyway, so here's here's from Abarim Publications. It says victor over the people. And what is interesting about this is, so... The name consists of two elements, okay? Niki, meaning victory, and Laos, which is like the common people or the people. But it also is related to Laodicea, related. This name here just like jumped out at me when I saw it, <laughs> Laodicea. So here's just a blown up version of it so you can kind of see Laodicea here. Um, so Laodicea has a very similar meaning, a, a justice of the people. Um, you can look it up in Strong's G2993. Oops, there we go. So I have the scripture here of the, these are the, this is the seventh of a series of letters that Jesus wrote to the churches. And these letters had meaning for the churches that were um, there at the time that Jesus is writing to these churches that were actual churches in history, but they have meaning for today too. And it seems like if you follow the timeline of history and then you get to the seventh church of Laodicea, it's a very um, interesting connections between this church of Laodicea and the church that you see today. Um, Listen to this. Many of you have heard this before, but there might be some new people, so I have to go over all of it. Um, and to the angel, this is in Revelation chapter 3. I'm sorry I didn't write that down on here, but if you want to look for it, it's Revelation chapter 3, I think verses 14 through 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, okay, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy, I have need of nothing, and do not know that you are actually, you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with the eye salve that you may see. And many as I love, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. So here you have, you know, in the very beginning, Jesus is saying, this is what the amen says. Amen means like truth. This is, this is the truth. You're not seeing the truth. I mean, is that not what's happening today? Okay. The seriousness of this is he says, you know, 
you're not cold or hot. You're like apathetic. You have not, it's like the, it's like the professor who doesn't want to take a stand for anything. He's not cold or hot. He's just going with the flow to his own demise. Not only the demise of everybody that he is sending off to be eliminated, but also himself. Do you really think that someone like this is saved? No, no. Um, it says, therefore, be zealous and repent because Jesus says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. That's not uh, someone who's saved. But it does say that, you know, yes, Jesus so loved God, so loved the world that he sent his only son. But if we are to become the children of God, then you know, we need to be zealous for the Lord. Um, we cannot just sit back and do nothing. Um, we, we need to do the right thing. You know, it can't just be about living that extra moment or just getting by like the mother on the rail station. You know, she, maybe in her mind, she was keeping her, her children alive a little bit longer, but you know what? I mean, even if they perished right there on that platform, because the mother just would not let them go, then then that's it. Then, then that's it. But, but no, her legacy is that she just let them go. And, you know, she didn't know for sure that they were absolutely going to kill all of them, but she sent them off basically to die by themselves alone. And I think that's even worse. So, um, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And, you know, here we have this, this imagery of Jesus on the other side of a door knocking, trying to get in. This is not Jesus who's, who's fellowshipping and having relationship with his beloved church. No, this is a church that's thrown Jesus out the door and Jesus is there at the door still trying to knock to get in. So I know many people think that, you know, everybody is saved in the church and, you know, you said the sinner's prayer. Well, did you really say it from here? Was a convert, did a real conversion happen? Or were you just buying a free insurance policy and it didn't mean anything to you? It was just cheap. Like, oh, you know, I'm covered now. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. I mean, when you become a believer, you're basically saying, Lord, it, it belongs to you. I am yours. And from that day forward, you're going to be thinking about him every day because you love him. And there is the evidence of a true conversion. It doesn't mean you're perfect. I'm not saying that. I'm definitely not perfect, but I certainly care about the things that God cares about and, um, that is what I believe is important is that we are being sanctified and, and there there's the evidence of a true conversion. So, you know, it says that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling to make sure that we truly are in the faith. And I, I see a lot of evil that's just able to happen in this world because there are people in high places that have just completely sold out. I mean... There's just so many psychopaths out there running the show and, um, you know, unfortunately not enough good hearted people there to balance out the evil. It's just they're they're really taking hold. I just continue to pray that evil will not prevail. But at the end of the day, it's always back to the prayer that Jesus tells us to pray, which you know, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if this has to be the end and this is the way it has to be to bring about the ultimate fulfillment of uh, all things prophesied in this Bible, then so be it if that's the way it has to be. But we are certainly called to occupy and do everything we can um, for what is right and what is pure. And like it said back in, you know, in Proverbs 24 about you know, defending people that are being sent off to the slaughter. It's like, you know, keep these things in mind as we see what's going on in the world around us. I have to be careful what I say uh, on YouTube, obviously. I mean, there's a lot of people using lots of code words for everything nowadays. I'm not really that good at that, but I'm trying. And um, thank you for listening today. I hope... <laughs> 
I hope you see the encouragement in what I'm sharing. Yes, Jesus is coming soon. Yes, things are crazy out there and getting darker, but we are the light and we are to get brighter as the dark gets darker. And that's our job and it's not going to be easy and it maybe it means that you know that's where we'll meet our end but again the lord's will be done i want to go down you know go down swinging for jesus so to speak so um ultimately always pray for peace and that it never comes to that but you know, we see the writing on the wall. We see what's going on and we just got to gird our, our loins <laughs> and stay prayed up, you know, the, put on the full armor of God every day. I'm going to go ahead. I think I have time to make my second video about this other dream and um, stay encouraged. Maranatha. God bless you. Bye.